Good morning and welcome to the United Methodist Church of Chugiak. My name is Jim Depkin. I'm happy to say that I am the pastor here. Glad to see you here as we gather for worship on this uh, surprisingly well, pretty or day than it was anticipated, at least as of yesterday. Uh, so we do have several announcements as we gather for worship together this morning. A lot of them are in your bulletins. You can find them there, and I'll point some out to you. Uh, first off, we do have um, Sherry filling in the piano for this week and the next few weeks, and we're glad that she's able to be here for us. Uh, then on Wednesday evening at 6.30, we have Wednesday Work and Wieners. And uh, so we, we gathered here at 6.30, worked for an hour, hour and 15 minutes, something like that. And uh, then I brought over hot dogs. And uh, we had hot dogs and sat and talked. And it's a way to be in fellowship with each other and get some of the work done around the church as we prepare for the close of summer and the start of our fall, fo fall programming. Also, this is the last Sunday uh, that we're collecting for the uh, Love, Inc. annual backpack giveaway, uh, participating with 19 other churches in the area. And, but if you did not bring anything in today, on Wednesday, I'm going to bring it over to the church that's sort of putting this, getting, collecting them so they can be put together. Uh, so if you do bring in something between now and uh, noon on Wednesday, uh, I will get it over there. And there's a pile of things down by the Welcome Center. You can just put stuff there and um, uh, collect there. Then uh, today we are having uh, uh, we're, we're having a Holy Communion during worship today, and all persons are welcome to receive. Doesn't matter where it is you come from or where it is you're going to. But also, if you're joining us online and would like to participate in Holy Communion, you may do that as well too. So you're invited at this point to go into your house, uh, wherever it is you're watching, and find some uh, bread of some sort and some juice of some sort. And you can participate along with us as we partake in this space. And for those that are gathering here, we will have Holy Communion by intinction today, meaning you'll be handed a piece of bread to be dipped into the cup. And we'll also have a um, gluten-free station uh, for a gluten-free bread option. And also, if you would prefer the prepackaged, because uh, for health reasons you would like, to, like that, we have the prepackaged communion as well. So all that's going on today. Some other announcements, uh, R for R, Recycle for a Reason. They're looking for a sign putter upper. A sign putter upper, it requires about one, uh, one hour per month to do this. And if you're able to help out, uh, they would be greatly appreciated. In more R for R news, we do have a sale this coming weekend, uh, but they did get some surprising things uh, in the collection. They got a hospital bed, yes, yeah. <laughs> I said hospital bed, but oh. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, a hospital bed, a transfer device, and an electric wheelchair yesterday. All this came in, and um, uh, apparently the family that brought it in was going to take this to the dump uh, because they didn't know who to get it to. And so by bringing it here, hopefully we can find someone either in this church community or our extended community that is able to use those devices. Uh, if, you, if you have any questions... K is the one to see right here if you have questions about those devices. Some other announcements. Uh, we do have um, uh, visiting with the Rube family today for a few weeks uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, Yaro, who is an exchange student in 2018. Wave your hand, Yaro. Yay! And uh, brought along uh, Mother Marianne, Marianne, Sister Unique, and Sister e Really good job writing that out phonetically for me, just so you know. Uh, he did a really good job of that. Well, glad you're with us today. Uh, then also, um, we do have three by five note cards for our, our prayers today. So at some point before the uh, prayers are said, uh, they will be collected. If you have a prayer you'd like to write on that, uh, please feel free to do so. And for those worshiping online, if you would like to write down prayers as well, uh, Gavin can lift those up for us. Also, there's a youth retreat we've been invited to over Memorial Day weekend. Labor Day weekend, not Memorial Day, that's thinking way too far in advance or too far behind, but Labor Day weekend uh, with uh, St. John United Methodist Church. Uh, they did this last year as well, and we had a couple of our folks uh, go to that. Uh, so a youth retreat. Then if anyone could help after worship today to get the center red cloth hung back in the front of the sanctuary, it fell down last week, and we have a wedding next Saturday. Yeah, see, it's sort of like the hospital bed thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we have a wedding next Saturday, and we'd like that red cloth hung in the middle for the wedding. Uh, so if you can, if a couple of people can stay and help, help with that after worship, that'd be great. Uh, then if you notice, Betty over here is putting up some artwork. Uh, some of the teams that stayed here during the summer uh, made some artwork to go along with the fruit of the Spirit. 
And some of you did as well. And so uh, she is putting up the artwork to go along with the Fruit of the Spirit uh, listing along the side of the sanctuary there. And then do we have uh, Ken and Heidi, two nomads here? Okay. Well, they're supposed to be here. At least that's what I was told. So when Ken and Heidi come in, if they do, we could all just stand and look at them. I'm gonna, no, no, no. Uh, there's more cards to put up too. That, uh, if you'd like more cards to write, to do some more artwork, we have an art station downstairs by the Welcome Center uh, to do, put up some artwork for the Fruit of the Spirit as well. Uh, I think that covers all the announcements I have. And I will do, I already said this once, but I'll say it once more. The Wednesday work and wieners thing. Wednesday at 6.30, this is really an opportunity to get together and, and hang with each other and be with each other and do some work together and eat together. We had wonderful conversations about, uh, about regional comfort food. And, 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 and someone brought over meatloaf for me for the meatloaf sandwich the day after. It was a win all around, uh, <clears throat> really. Um, so uh, I would encourage you to come to that as a way to get to know one another a little bit better and to uh, be in fellowship with each other as we work on the church. Any other announcements? Well, I'd invite you all that are in-house today to stand and greet those around, around you with signs of peace and love. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Seated. Good morning. My name is Julie Dupkin. I'm happy to say I'm that guy's wife, and um, I'm your worship leader this morning. Would you please stand as you're able for the call to worship? As we worship this morning, let us turn our hearts to God, praying that we may be more holy in our own lives. Loving God, we pray that this day we may live in your presence and please you more and more. Lord Jesus, we pray that this day we may take up our crosses and follow you. Holy Spirit, 
We pray that this day you will fill us with yourself and cause your fruit to ripen in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Amen. Please remain standing for number 2051 in the Little Black Hymnal. I was there to hear your morning cry. is one of my absolute favorite hymns. Woo. Uh, please be seated. I think I'm in uh, verse 5 in that song. <laughs> uh, please join me in a prayer for goodness. We'll say this in unison. The fruit of the Spirit is goodness, not our own self-made goodness, but Christ's gift of goodness to us and through us. We open our eyes, and each and every day, we see God's goodness here, there, and everywhere. We see goodness in the sunrise and the mountain, in laughter and comfort, in the beating of our hearts and presence of our loved ones, in the sacredness of the very ordinary parts of life and sacredness of miracles and majesty. Therefore, we will sing of God's goodness all of our days. Amen. And please join me in the prayer for illumination. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our first lesson is a couple of things out of Acts about Barnabas, who was good. The first one is Acts 4. Uh, or Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 37, and then Acts 11, 19 through 26. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. 
There was a Levite, a name native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And now we move to Acts 11, 19 through 26. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene who, on coming to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists also, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they associated with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Since it's just Titus uh, as, a, as a kid today, I'm not going to call him down. Uh, unless you want to come down, Titus. Okay. You, Titus is going to come down. Okay. <laughs> A round of applause for Titus. Hey! <laughs> Titus, who I know has, uh, is now swimming with the golds. It, uh, swim, have a seat. Uh, it's swimming with the golds and swim team. Um, so uh, I know that we talk about God being good in various circles of life, oftentimes uh, at a grace at tables. Um, I know one that we said all the time growing up was, God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food, amen. We said that all the time growing up. Now, that is not what we say with our kids, because we do the Johnny Appleseed song every time. But uh, I know also, in, sometimes in worship, there's a call to worship that is done in many, we've done it here before as well, where it's, God is good all the time, all the time, God is good, as a way to start off worship. And God being good comes through our songs. And there's one song that I won't have you necessarily lead today, um, but it's called God is So Good. And it's just a simple, simple, simple song. It goes, God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. You got that? I figured you all could handle that one. Okay, it goes, so God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, he's so good to me. A song that talks about God's goodness. Now, what does it mean to be good? Do you have any idea? I mean, really, what... Parents out there, what does it mean to be good when you tell your parents, be good? Anyone? What? What? Kind? See, we can't go to kind because kind was last week. Kind, <laughs> kindness was last week. So, but you're exactly right. This word gets squishy. The words get squishy because kindness and goodness mean a lot of the same. You said what? Follow the rules. Following the rules. Uh, under broad umbrella, a lot of definitions. You said what, Kay? Behave. Behave. Or I think in my household, when my parents would say be good, that means don't be bad. Is <laughs> what, <they're really, laughs> what they were really saying. <laughs> be good, that's kind of vague. Don't be bad is what they meant. Uh, and there were some probably preconceived understandings about what they meant by don't be bad. Uh, having a sister growing up, we experimented with be bad a lot. Uh, but yeah, being good is is something that is a little hard to define, but just like with the songs we sang, the song we sang just now, it's reflective of God's actions to us. And if we want to know what good looks like, we look at God. And that's what good looks like. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you are so good to us. And under the broad definition of goodness, there are so many things about being like you. Help us be like you all days. Amen. Okay, thanks, Titus. Thank 
Now we have another hymn. If you would stand for it, it's number 98 in the big hymnals. Stand as you're able. Our next lesson is also from Acts, this time about Tabitha, who was good. This is from Acts chapter 9, verses 36 to 43. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with their request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pause for a moment of silent prayer. Thy will, O Lord, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Thy will. Amen. 
I confess to you as I begin that through my head I have praise the Lord, praise the Lord as I begin. Uh, uh, preaching, preaching is an interesting calling uh, it's, uh, to do this on week in, week out. It's, uh, sometimes it's like giving a TED talk every week. Um, sometimes it's like entertainment. Sometimes it's like an academic paper. Uh, but each week it's a matter of trying to connect the, the biblical concepts with real life people uh, in the here and now. And just like Jesus showed in much of his preaching and teaching, it's often done with sharing stories. Uh, stories from my life, stories that I've read or, or heard, illustrations that try to drive home a point. And as I've been at this for nearly 30 years, uh, I find that there are stories from all these years of preaching that come up again and again, that, that somewhere in my spiritual life, somewhere in my pastoral life, um, I find these important. Um, and, and here's one that has come up again and again that I find important. Uh, nearly 30 years ago, I was at Frankfurt Trinity United Methodist Church in Frankfurt, Indiana. And I was new to ministry, and I was new to that church. And at some point early in my time there, the United Methodist Women's Group, which was active in that congregation, determined that there should be a United Methodist Men's Group. And they were going to make it happen. Um, and since those Indiana men mostly listened to their Indiana women uh, when it came to church matters, I thought this was a grand idea. Um, now, to jumpstart the group, the women held a dinner for all the men as a way to force them to be together um, and to force them to talk with each other. Uh, they did a pretty standard get-to-know-you activity uh, where we were, able to, we were supposed to talk to the people on our right and, and left and, and get to know some things about them. And, and then we would introduce, say, the person to our left as we run, run around the table. And I thought this was a great way to, for me to find out more about the men of the church. Um, and my partner and I found some interesting facts about each other. And as the ladies had us begin, uh, we got to show everyone how it was done. And I had spent a summer in Nome, Alaska. And he remembers summers at his grandfather's lake. And I sometimes still brought out my New York accent. And he once caught uh, what his dad thought was a record smallmouth bass. Uh, and so we introduced ourselves, but it went downhill after us very quickly. Um, next to us, we hear, uh, this is Bill, known him for a lot of years, nice family, he's a good man. To the next person, uh, this is John, uh, we moved to town about the same time, he's a good man. Uh, this, is, this is Tommy. He, he's a farmer. He's a good man. Uh, now, I don't know if everyone said about the person next to them nothing, almost nothing except they were a good man, but it had to be close. Uh, and as I've recalled those story, that story over the years, I've, I've shared how sad it was that these men who had been in the church with each other for so many years, who had been in Sunday school classes, had built the church physically with each other, uh, could only say about each other that they were good men. And this is why I think it's important to come to things like the book study Sunday school and, and youth group and, and Wednesday work and wieners. It's so we know each other more. It's about deeper relationships that, that bridge those barriers that divide us. But as I reflected on the story this week, I wondered what it is they meant when they said they were good men. I'm not saying they weren't good. I'm not saying any of them were bad. Uh, but, but what made them good? Did they marry well? Did they live in the good part of town? They hadn't robbed any banks that anyone knew about? Uh, what about their lives radiated some amount of, of goodness? Because goodness is a scriptural goodness, it is a fruit of the Spirit. And it's the one we're talking about today. If someone is a good man or a good woman, what is it about them that makes them good? Well, and so we we'll do that, we're going to look at two people, a good man and a good woman, whom our scriptures describe as being good or doing good things. Now, Barnabas was a Cypriot Jew and a prominent Christian disciple in early Jerusalem. His story appears in the book of Acts, but he's also mentioned in some of Paul's letters because he was one of Paul's traveling companions from about the years 46 to 48 in the Common Era, or A.D., and one of the early Christian theologians, Tertullian, claimed that Barnabas wrote the epistle to Hebrews. 
but we really don't know if that's the case. Um, but the Bible specifically says he was a good man, and, and here's his story. There were converts made in Antioch after the death of Stephen. People were, in modern language, coming to Jesus, and word of this spread around the region. It says Acts 11, news of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion, for he was a good man, says the scriptures, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas, Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they associated with the church and taught a great many people, and it was at Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Barnabas was a good man. It, it says so. Um, what did that mean? Well, in chapter 11, he was full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. He saw the good work of others and celebrated it without being jealous. He exhorted them all to remain faithful. He was an encourager of a people of faith. In Acts 4, we heard that he was, a, he was generous with his possessions, selling a field and bringing the proceeds to be shared. Also, even his name shows him to be a good man. His given name was Joseph, but his words were so good that other disciples called him Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. So I guess it's a pretty good characteristic about what goodness is or what it looks like. It, it kind of looks, looks like Barnabas. And then there's Tabitha, and her story is pretty wild. Uh, we're going to call her Tabitha, which is her Aramaic name, uh, as the Greek version, Dorcas, doesn't translate quite as well to modern-day English ears. Uh, but her name means gazelle, and it was fairly common at the time. We hear about Tabitha in Acts as well. And she lived in the port city of Joppa, which the adult Sunday school class uh, heard a bit about last year in their study of Paul. Joppa is, at this point, surrounded by Tel Aviv in Israel for some perspective about where that is. While the scriptures don't actually say she was a good woman, they say clearly she was devoted to good works and acts of charity. And she died, and here's where it gets pretty interesting. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the windows stood beside him. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. So how good was Tabitha? Even in her death, her goodness was being felt. In her death, widows were weeping and sharing all the clothes that she had made for them. They were remembering and celebrating her goodness after she passed. And and maybe goodness looks like that, like Tabitha. Now, we shared last week that this middle part of the fruit of the Spirit gets a little squishy in their meanings. You can see where kindness and goodness overlap. They even did as we talked about our children's time together. And it gets a little squishier when we realize that some translations, namely the New Revised Standard Version, uh, in, in those translations, what we've been calling goodness in those translations is often translated as generosity. So what is agisthosone, which is the Greek word that is translated goodness in our fruit list? Well, it, it means benevolence. It means generosity. It implies a sense of, of moral decency. It is a character of goodness that leads to active goodness in the world. But most importantly, it is rooted in the goodness of our God. Exodus 34, 6 tells us, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. First Chronicle tells us, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. The Psalms sing about God's goodness. 
Psalm 33 tells us, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Psalm 34 says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is you got this. You see where it's going. And in Psalm 119 says, you are good and do good. In Psalm 23, and a song I know from early in my childhood tells us, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. And, and what God does is good. In the first act of God, creation, God looks over all that God has made and he declares it good. What God made is good. The goodness that we are to exhibit is rooted in the goodness of our God. Now, I remember, as we shared earlier, being told by my parents to be good when they went out for a night and my sister and I were home alone with a sitter, uh, or later on, uh, on our own. And by, by good, they really meant don't do anything bad, like fight over which TV show to watch or some other matter that seemed of great importance at the time. Um, but that kind of, is kind of a misinterpretation of what the Bible seems to be saying about goodness. Being good isn't just refraining from doing anything bad or objectionable. That leads more towards goody two shoeism than actual goodness. Um, but it's a matter of being upright in heart and life. And if you want to see an example of that, you go to Barnabas or to Tabitha or to Jesus. Jesus' life is a good example of what goodness looks like for the life of a Christian. Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world to give the gift of eternal life. That's the gospel, and the gospel literally means good news. He had a good ministry. Peter says in Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. He went around doing good. And Jesus, by way of illustration, refers to himself as the good shepherd because he lays down his life for the sheep. And when we follow the way of Jesus, we'll find that we are good people in this world of ours. And the goodness that we show will give glory to God and maybe lead others to God as well. Goodness as a concept is a little squishy. Jesus is good. He's not very squishy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this point, we're going to lift up our joys, our concerns. If you've written down prayers on three by five cards, I invite you to hold them up. Uh, and if any are coming from the back, please hold them up. And Gavin has one in the back as well. <clears throat> I did get a um, talk with Mark Birch early a couple days ago. Uh, his grandmother passed. Um, and, and at 101 years old, he said, uh, and as we talked on the phone a little bit saying that, yes, that is a, it's a different kind of death when someone you know dies at, a, at an old age with lots of stories to tell from a life well lived, uh, but that still leaves a big hole in, in the lives of those that loved her and knew her. Uh, so we pray for the Birch family and all those who loved her and knew her today. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Other prayers? Uh, prayers for uh, grandson Jimmy as he goes in for his next investigative te health test. And uh, Jimmy has had a rough stretch. Uh, and so prayers for Jimmy. He's uh, undergone several different tests already, I believe. Uh, and um, trying to figure out kind of what's going on with him. So prayers for Jimmy and uh, 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 that uh, the doctors may find what is wrong and uh, be able to get him back to where he needs to be. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thanks uh, to God uh, for Titus, who acts as a conduit to get the message of the day in a, different, in a new and different way. So thanks to God for Titus. Titus, that's about you, buddy. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, for healing and patience for those living with pain uh, in light of abundant grace, uh, in light of Christ. Abundant grace for those who find they have made some poor choices. 
Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And healing for those living with pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, prayer for Gail, Brenda, and Josh. Um, uh, crossing high water in Eagle River uh, during the Crow Pass, uh, Crow Pass run today. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and all those for on the, who are on the trail today. So. Prayers for Cindy, who is having a major operation on Thursday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, prayers uh, my, my mom lifts up a prayer uh, for a smooth and safe move to Michigan from Atlanta. They actually, movers are coming to do the final packing on Tuesday, and uh, they will head out. I've been, and they'll be uh, moving up to Michigan to be with my sister. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And I'll lift up a Thanksgiving. We kind of went out of our way last evening. Uh, we drove up to Talkeetna for dinner <laughs> um, with uh, some friends were camping there and uh, got to have dinner with our friends. And it was a, a, good, a good use of our time to go up and, and nurture that relationship and to be with them. Uh, and the weather held, <laughs> at least while we were there and eating. So, uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us go before God with our prayer of confession, which is found there in our bulletins. Forgiving God in a world filled with so much pain, we confess that we often shut our eyes to keep from seeing things as they truly are. Grant us the strength to face the reality of our world and give us the courage to bring your light to those who walk in darkness. Open our eyes to our own misunderstandings our own failures, and our own faults. God, lead us in the footsteps of Jesus, who reveals your glory through his life, his teachings, and his love. Help us to see others as you see them. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mostly, God, we give you thanksgiving for this day that you have made, this chance to get together in this space, and for all those who are worshiping with us online as well, we give you thanks and praise, dear God. You are indeed good. You are good to us in so many ways. We thank you for your love for us, your care for us, and the care you show to those whom we love and share this world with. Dear God, we are in many ways a broken people, and we pray for healing and wholeness. We ask you move in our lives, in our relationships, in our minds, in our bodies, in our faith, to bring healing and wholeness as you desire. Mostly, God, we give you thanksgiving most of all for the gift of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will some ushers come forward, please, for our offering today? <clears throat>
imagine when we sing the last song, it'll be the more traditional version of that, because that'll be hard for us to sing along with that one, I think. Okay. Let's stand for our doxology. Praise God from whom a blessing flow. these gifts to you for the work of this church, for the coming of your kingdom, and for the salvation of your world. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as you are able and turn to page 13 in your hymnals. For the great thanksgiving for Holy Communion, all persons are welcome to receive. It actually, it doesn't matter where you've come from or where it is you're going to. And for those of you that are worshiping online, if you would uh, like to get some bread and some juice to participate along with us, you may. stand behind here, I guess. Today. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you, this is my blood of, blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The bread which you break, the sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup of which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. Please be seated. Will the communion service come forward, please? First, 
plus. Bon, je sais plus. Et bon, je sais plus. juice over here. The table is ready. We have uh, regular uh, gluten full bread, <laughs> regular bread in the middle uh, and some juice as well. And if you come down and go to this side, we do have the gluten free bread uh, with gluten free now juice. And also if you'd like the prepackaged uh, we have that over here as well on this side. Uh, all are able. They, all that want to come to receive may do so. We'll start serving the front of the back. We've been fed and nourished by God's word, by God's body and blood, by God's presence as we've been with each other on this day. And I invite you to stand for our closing 
hymn, which will not be quite as jazzy as the piece played earlier. Uh, God will take care of you, 130. And now may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Our congregation response, shalom, my friends. We're going to sing it once together, then once in a round. So once together, then once in a round. We'll hear it through on piano first. Together. Shalom, my friend, shalom, my friend, shalom, shalom. Until we meet again, until we meet again, shalom, shalom. This side first. Shalom, my friend, shalom, this side friend. Shalom, my friend, shalom, my friend, shalom. Until we meet again, shalom, 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 shalom. shalom. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Yeah. If we have them up, send up the red cloth, that'd be great. Thank you for joining us for today's broadcast. You can find us on the web at www.umcchugiak.org, on Twitter at umcchugiak, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash umcofchugiak. We hope you'll check back regularly and invite your friends and family to join us. And until we meet again, God bless 
and remember our charge to be the salt and light. Thank you.